to get uh, through the alcohol induced haze, maybe left over from last night, maybe not. Okay, even Benny might look, start, want to start to listen now, Benny, huh? Okay, good morning. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, in this session I'm going to show you um, uh, my product Uber Agent, and in order to get you, uh, give you a little perspective of what that actually is, let me start, uh, start talking about Splunk. So why would I do that? Uber Agent is an add-on, or you might call it an app, <coughs> for Splunk. So in order, if you want to understand what uh, Uber Agent does, you first need to know a tiny little bit about Splunk. Splunk has been quite, uh, has been gaining popularity uh, recently, in the past few years. Um, you probably have heard from it, uh, heard about Splunk here and there, maybe at Synergy, maybe you had some other uh, other even event. And the easiest way to understand Splunk is to think about it as a platform. It's not really a, a tool or a product that does very much by itself. If you download and install Splunk, which is, by the way, pretty easy and pretty fast process, uh, you won't see very much. You'd see something a little bit similar to this uh, to th this screen, which mostly consists of this search box. And of course, I could at least theoretically enter anything here, and um, I might get, I might or might not get any <laughs> any results. Uh, Splunk has started out um, as a kind of Google for log files. That was about nine years ago. They can do much more now, but um, it's very helpful to, um, to think of that basic capability. Splunk indexes data, machine data, that is generated by systems uh, in your data center. Those systems can be basically anything. Can be appliances, routers, firewalls, computers, servers, uh, whatever, anything you have that can that generates data. And typically, the you have many, many machines of all kinds, and these machines write data to the very all kinds of logs and uh, application uh, event logs and stuff like that. And uh, typically, that data is not being uh, used or processed very efficiently. In other words, uh, it's not used at all unless some big um, incident happens and the administrator um, needs to find out very quickly what actually was the cause of this and he tries digging through log files uh, one system, system by system, which is extremely inefficient and uh, yeah, it uh, will take a long time to actually find out what was happening, and it would have been a lot more effective to just uh, kind of be able to search over all that. And that is the basic capability that Splunk gives you. Splunk is a kind of big data uh, product, which means that it can process and handle really, really large amounts of data. Uh, much larger amounts of data than you uh, uh, will probably ever be uh, dealing with. Um, Splunk has a free license, and that free license allows you to uh, process or index 500 megabytes per day. So, in other words, 500 megabytes per day is s such a tiny amount of data that Splunk thinks, okay, we'll give that away for free. Uh, the smallest Splunk license you can buy, I think, is one terabyte per day. And as you can see, uh, Splunk is licensed in a very interesting way. Uh, you can store any amount of data in Splunk you want. It doesn't cost you anything. But in order to put that data there, you need to pay. So you need for the, uh, in other words, you need to pay for the daily indexed data volume. And as I said, uh, smallest license is one, um, one, is it terabyte? That was stupid. It, one gigabyte per day. And they have licenses up into the terabytes. And uh, the largest Splunk customer, um, I was told, is Apple. And they uh, put everything that happens in the App Store and on iTunes and all their stuff, they put all that, every single transaction, into Splunk. And uh, I think it is something in the area of 100 gigabytes, uh, sorry, terabytes per day of data they, those systems are generating. And Splunk helps them analyze what actually is happening there. And, uh, stuff like that. 
Now, um, Splunk has come a long way from the early days. Uh, in the early days, they actually did only have this user interface you're seeing here. And the, the use case it, then was index every log file you have. Then maybe a user calls help desk, I've got a problem logging on to something. Then help desk tap types in the username, uh, yeah, yeah. like this, searches and maybe gets a few entries uh, from some log files and can immediately very quickly see uh, which system um, is uh, perhaps denying access for that user. In this case, there are no results. Yes, I've, that's not really a demo I prepared. Because I'm not going to talk much more about Splunk, but uh, to about Uber Agent. Now, Splunk um, has an app model. You can develop apps for Splunk. Uh, they have a Splunk base where uh, a few hundred app apps, I think more than 400 apps, are available for f most of them are free, developed by the community. And you could get those apps are basically little tarballs or zip packages, uh, archives. You can put those um, apps on your machines. And um, yeah, those, and they, they enrich Splunk and make that pl platform um, uh, actually useful. Um, it's pretty easy to imagine that if you have a system that can uh, process huge amounts of data, well, that is very nice, but uh, it only gives you value, value if you have valuable data in the system. Now, there are two kinds of apps, apps that collect data and put their data into Splunk, and uh, the other type is apps that visualize data and present it to the user. In other, other words, that have uh, apps that have da dashboards and uh, you mm. So there are two types of apps, uh, that was where I was, I was interrupted apparently, uh, those apps that put, put data into Splunk and apps that um, search Splunk and present the data that is being returned. Now Uber Agent has, it is actually a two-headed monster, <laughs> no that's not really the, what I would like uh, to call it, but it, it, ha, it ha, comes uh, as two types of, it has one app of each type. One of those is the actual agent. It, that's a very um, efficient, low footprint, uh, very tiny executable that you need to deploy or that needs to run on the endpoints you want to manage. Those endpoints can be any kind of Windows machines, uh, desktops, virtualized uh, machines of any kind, and apps and desktop, whatever. Even VMware View and other uh, uh, products are supported. Now, this agent collects all kinds of uh, cool stuff about what is happening on those Windows boxes and uh, sends that data to Splunk. Splunk stores and <coughs> efficiently indexes the data. And then you have a second app. That app does not need to be deployed to your Windows boxes or, or any other machines on the network. It only needs to be, it only sits on the Splunk server. It contains all the dashboards and um, uh, yeah, you can use it to get to the data. But uh, a very important point is that um, that Splunk app, that, that second app that pre pre uh, presents the data, um, it, it's more or less just an example of what, what you can do with the data. Creating Splunk, Splunk dashboards is pretty simple. There's no compiled code in there. It's just uh, uh, more or less web technologies you use to build a Splunk app. And each dashboard is more or less one file, a text file with the definition and the search and um, a few instructions, uh, instructions on how to, what to do, how to format that data. So it's pretty easy to, uh, if you see something you don't like or if you need some data presented in some other way, well, just uh, it's pretty uh, uh, easy to, to do that. And the real uh, power of Splunk uh, is when you use and combine data from different sources. So for example, you could use Uber Agent to uh, collect data from within your Windows machines. Uh, you could use various other apps that are available, for example, to monitor your NetApp machine, your monitor, your hypervisor, whatever you have in your data center that is important. And then you could put that data together uh, on one single dashboard, which is, of course, always customer specific. Every customer wants to see different things, uh, needs to have different metrics, um, but that's very easily possible. Now, let me show you a few of the dashboards uh, of the things Uber Agent can do. 
And um, yeah, just if you have any questions, want to say anything specific, just let me know. I, this is uh, not not recorded or anything, so I just uh, uh, let, let me see what, can I, what I can come come up with. As you can see in this menu here on top, Uber Agent has various views into what is happening. It has a machine-centric view, then it, uh, a session-centric view. It, show, has, it can show you various things about applications, and finally processes and a few other things. Now, Uber Agent understands about user sessions, which is, of course, very important in a, um, a ZenApp environment. And it also understands about logons, which are, of course, one of the more uh, important things that uh, are relevant to very relevant to the user experience on uh, yeah on especially in Zenap machines now let me see if we get any data apparently not oh it's not it just seems to be a little bit slow for some reason okay now uh, uber agent um, detects logons and records the total logon duration time, which is of course a very nice metric to have and very important one. And then it breaks down their total logon duration into various um, phases. You can see the uh, most important phases here at the, the, at the right hand side. For example, the duration of the profile lo uh, lo yeah, pro user profile loading, processing of group policy, and a few other things. And this uh, graph here, this colorful graph, uh, gives you an indie very easy, quick indication of how much time is spent where. And this category other uh, uh, became somewhat famous during Synergy because Jim Moyle made fun of it. <laughs> um, yeah, other is of course everything else. That's not in one, any of the other categories. Um, the uh, Uber Agents dashboards typically look like, ha have this basic layout you're seeing here. There's a time range selector so you can uh, basically pull data from any point in time. Splunk, uh, the way Splunk stores data, it, it, and it's, it's a little bit different than uh, other monitoring products like, for example, the infamous Edge site. Um, it does not compress data. Uh, in other words, you don't lose resolution as time progresses. Um, if you want to um, see what has been happening one year, uh, one year back, you can see it in full resolution without losing any data points. I think edge side compresses. If you, you get, if you connect to a computer, you can get real-time data. But if, it, if it's being when it's being sent to the SQL server, you get only one data point every five minutes or things like that. And the further you go back, the the less accurate it becomes. So that is not the case here. Uh, you can always filter and search with these boxes in here if you're looking for data from only a specific user machine or something like that. So we have that on all dashboards. And then typically we have some eye candy, meaning so, uh, in other words, one or several um, graphs or charts like this one to keep managers happy. And then on the typically in the lower part of, the, of each dashboard, there's the actual raw data um, as it is being uh, collected by Uber Agent. So, for example, you can see here there's uh, one user locked on, not very any remoting protocol, so, but uh, lo working on the consoles is probably an effect client. You can, the, the guy was locked on a little bit uh, ago. The Splunk server is on German time zone, so we have these uh, strange times here. Uh, you can see the total duration is in this case, th th this case, 31 seconds, and then that total time is broken down into various phases. One of those is, of course, the loading of the user profile. Pro and the other, another one is processing, processing of group policy. A group policy is a very uh, complex thing, and many organizations use it very extensively. Uh, and it, so it is very. It would be nice to have a little bit more insight into what is happening during this uh, this group policy phase. Uber Agent records more information about th that. Let, let, let's take a uh, hopefully quick look. This dashboard, um, yeah, it, it um, tells you here. Let, uh, let me scroll down first. So it, um, th this, this column here, it has the total group policy processing time. That's the, the same time from the previous dashboard. And then this time is broken down, down into various phases. One of those, the first one is the uh, communication with the Active Directory. It's called DC Discovery here. 
And if that time is high, you may have a problem with ID, which is probably in reality uh, rather a problem with DNS. And the other columns are uh, the processing times for the various CSEs. Um, you probably know that Groupalys is, Groupalys is modular. And uh, each uh, module is called a CSE, client side extension. <laughs> and both Microsoft and various uh, other vendors and third parties are creating those modules. Um, with the, these modules, you can basically enrich group policy and make it do whatever you like. And uh, there's no finite list of all modules available because yeah, any vendor can create his or uh, her own. Um, so, uh, and it wouldn't be very practical uh, for Uber agent to display uh, maybe 100 columns of modules that could potentially be used, but are probably not be uh, not active in any specific in one specific environment. So, Uber agent automatically detects which uh, CSEs are in use and shows you the processing times only for those. So, here we have some Citrix-related uh, policy processing, folder redirection. Wow, great, very nice. Do that. Uh -huh and drive mapping and a few other things. And uh, when I click on one of these rows, I can drill down and uh, I'm going to see all information Uber Agent has uh, collected about this specific logon, which is basically what you've seen on the previous two dashboards. In but in addition, there's one uh, little thing more. You see the AD site and the domain controller that was, sorry, that was authenticating this uh, user in this specific logon. And you see the names of the group policy objects that um, were processed. So you can see that, for example, the Citrix group policy was uh, configured or was coming from the GPO called GPO All Citrix Users. Um, well, that was one of my creative days. And uh, the processing time was point, nearly point, uh, half a second, roughly. OK, so uh, that's about uh, logon duration. Um, let me move on to uh, yes, sessions. I told you, you Uber Agent knows about sessions. Um, not all monitoring products do that. Uh, but of course, if you're in a term server environment, uh, session is a very important entity. And it is very nice to know, for example, for sizing purposes, how, what the average uh, uh, resource consum consumption per session is. In this case, it is pre seems to be pretty high. That is because uh, this demo environment I have here right now uh, simulates uh, PCs, not uh, thermal server sessions. But it uh, doesn't really matter. The concept is, is the same. So if you were to uh, put this workload on ZenApp, you, you'd need quite a bit of RAM, for example, or CPU and also I.O., things like that. So these um, averages uh, you see at the, more at the top of the screen can be really helpful for size and capacity planning and stuff like that. The next, in this, the eye candy section, you see the, um, the in other words, you might call them the worst users, those users consuming the most uh, the resources in various categories, I.O., uh, RAM, and uh, uh, CPU. And again, at the, in the lower section of the dashboard, you see uh, the actual raw data, you see the various uh, sessions Uber Agent um, is monitoring in this, or has seen in the time frame selected above, and um, we get various performance related data, and this is, uh, yeah, the, the, the usage or re resource consumption for this one specific session. One thing I like to highlight is the I.O. latency. That's the actual latency of disk accesses. And it's collected at the disk level. Um, so it really gives you a very good indication of what user experience is like. If, if you have a slow disk subsystem, every single I.O. takes, for example, in this case, uh, roughly 14 milliseconds. <laughs> seconds, that would be bad. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so in this case, 14 milliseconds, which is kind of OK, not great, but uh, you know, not, not too bad either. Yeah. Uh, this uh, section, it shows you um, data from all processes that belong to a specific uh, RDS session, with a specific session ID. Yes, indeed. Yeah, this is designed to give you information about the actual user sessions, what 
the users are doing, what they, what kind of load they are creating. And there's another, oops, sorry, there's another session, uh, sorry, dashboard called specifically session zero, and it gives you the same information, but for the basically for the operating system session. Session zero is of course the OS with all the services and uh, stuff that's running independently of uh, of any user. Okay, now uh, let me show you some more uh, exciting stuff. Um, one thing that's relatively new in Uber Agent is uh, that it, its capability to monitor, monitor GPU usage. Uh, we've been hearing a lot about GPUs uh, in the past days, and this topic seems to be getting hotter and hotter. And um, uh, some people have even have indicated that it's currently difficult to monitor what the GPU, what a GPU is actually doing, what its load is. And yes, I agree. Uh, it is difficult. UberAgent helps a little bit by showing you um, well, what the uh, compute usage for any specific GPU is and the RAM usage. And you can see that both per machine. So, and here uh, um, on top again, you have the worst contenders, if that's a correct way of saying it. Uh, and um, yeah, here you can see in the, 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 the data section, you can see how much dedicated memory specific uh, machine, uh, specific GPU is, be, is using. Uh, dedicated me memory is the actual memory on the graphics card and the shared memory in case of simpler solutions where the, the, the computer's RAM is shared with the GPU. Um, you can see uh, we have that information both per machine, as you can see here, and per process. So you can find out which processes are actually using the GPU and to what extent. So in this simulated environment, you see that uh, we have a video, uh, yeah, video player, Windows M Media Player, which is using the GPU. Video, uh, video players tend to do that quite extensively, which is more, uh, normally a good thing because uh, it's le more efficient to decode video on the GPU than it is on the CPU. And also uh, browsers are using uh, the GPUs no, not too much, but yeah, but most modern, all modern browsers do, browsers do it. I know it from Chrome, Firefox, and IE. So yeah, they, you can see that information here. If you had a real uh, 3D application, AutoCAD, whatever, that would uh, turn up in here, of course, too. Now, um, we are looking at processes right now, so why not continue a little bit there. Um, Uber Agent is tries to give you information that is relevant for, uh, for, uh, for um, user experience and application performance. It tries not to be um, another task manager distributed uh, that collects distributed data. So we try to come up with clever ways, uh, clever things uh, that is to show you that are really helpful for administrators. And one of those is um, if you want to have, get, have a feeling for the user experience, um, the, the, how well the, the, the system behaves. The sh machines should be quick, fast, and easy to use. And typically, um, people try to monitor logon duration, which is, of course, a very important uh, aspect of this quick and fast Thing. Um, but once the user is locked on, you typically don't have much insight into how fast or how slow things are going. Um, now, it is very difficult um, to uh, get uh, collect the data in an in a generic and <coughs> not application specific way. <coughs> Sorry. There are, are th some tools out there that give you very detailed data about uh, execution. Uh, well, of the, about the speed of certain applications, but that works in, in such a way that the monitoring tool has to be specifically um, coded to work with each single application, and uh, and or the application needs to be specifically instrumented. Now, that is not a generic approach; it only works with very few select applications, and there is a lot of uh, overhead and work that, uh, that you need um, that required to 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 get to. The, to get that working. UberAgent, um, everything UberAgent does is um, 
Whenever we introduce a new feature, we make it in, do it in such a way that it works without any configuration fully automatically. But if we tend to give, try to give you ways to customize if that might be necessary. So regarding uh, application performance, we, well, one thing we can do is automatic, <laughs> automatically determine a process. Uh, startup duration. So how quickly are applications coming up once you double click the Outlook icon or whatever you have sitting on your desktop? Um, uh, we don't need any um, insight into any specific applications for that. We do that uh, in a generic fashion so it works with all processes, all applications. And here you can see um, that for example Outlook.exe uh, maybe a little bit uh, hard to make out which one is the which one is the uh, bad one IE of course as always and apparently uh, Chrome okay a little bit down further down you can see um, for each specific process how often was it started so in this example I explore XC 179 times in this specific window time window we're looking at right now and the average startup duration was roughly 10 seconds. Then we have some little, a little bit of statistical data, like the standard uh, deviation and things like that, um, which is often overlooked. And we also give you the disk I/O that was generated during startup. So some processes are, um, yeah, really, really, really light on disk, but some are really heavy. For example, starting up Photoshop generates a huge amount of disk I/O. Uh, especially when you do it the first time but even in, uh, when you start, it, start Photoshop and close it or and start it again or when the second user starts Photoshop it still generates a huge amount of disk I.O. So the file system cache in this case helps but it doesn't make the I.O. go away. So this gives you inf the information to, uh, f yeah, to, to understand w what your applications are doing. Uh, just let me check in this full screen view. I don't have no clue, clue how much time I have left. So apparently, more or less 15 to maybe 20 minutes. Okay, so some more cool stuff. Um, uh, this is not specifically new, but just let me quickly walk through it. Um, Uber Agent monitors the browser's performance. Uh, as you know, um, websites today are, are a lot more than just static things that uh, just contain a little bit of text and a few images. Um, websites are applications of their own. They run code on your machine. And a browser with many different tabs open is more or less a web OS, a framework or yeah, a, base, a base for running different web apps concurrently on your machine. Since websites run code on your machine, you should be interested in finding out, well, what is the impact of that. And Uberagen can tell you uh, that. It can tell you that very in a very detailed way for Internet Explorer. And it shows you that, for example, let's take a look at Facebook.com, creates on average 0.9% CPU load on, on this machine I was looking at here. And of course, it has all the other high quality metrics in this for this case too, like, like in the other dashboards, you see disk I.O., uh, I.O. latency, uh, RAM usage, network utilization, stuff like that. Um, now this works, this, we have been, we've had this feature for some time now for IE, and it, with IE it is pretty, well, it's not really easy, but it is well, possible to get to this data because Microsoft, you can say what you want about IE, I'm not using it either, but uh, it does have certain uh, interfaces and IP APIs that are very useful for enterprises. Um, so it is definitely an enterprise product, or it used to be at least. And uh, other browsers like specifically Chrome and Firefox, they do not have similar APIs. Now, we are extending our support for Chrome. So um, for Chrome right now, Uber Agent can give you information which not, uh, let me switch this a bit to a different time range, it looks nicer. Um, it, it cannot tell you yet which website um, uh, creates what kind of, has what kind of performance impact on your system. But it can tell you, um, as of now, which 
type of uh, Chrome uh, component or Chrome process, to be more specific, creates what load. So you can see Chrome is a modular um, application that, that uses many different Windows processes. <clears throat> and you can see that the main process, the browser process, um, uses th this, these resources, <laughs> CPU, RAM, and uh, other stuff as well. You can see that Flash generates, or what kind of uh, utilization um, Flash generates, and your favorite, I guess, Java, and uh, a few other things. Um, right now, there is uh, an experimental API in Chrome that allow, would allow us to collect the same data that we're collecting for IE, but it is still experimental, so it is not in the, uh, it is not part of the Chrome that you're running. So um, what I'm waiting for is that experimental API to uh, become, um, say, um, standard, uh, get into the standard uh, version of Chrome. And once that has happened, uh, it might happen tomorrow, it might happen in a year, I don't know. Uh, then we'll add the same, give you this, the same data for Chrome we can show today for Internet Explorer. Now, um, yeah, uh, UberAgent um, automatically shows, it has informa a lot of information about processes. And you can see the process names as their task manager, but that is a little bit tedious. Many of those process names are not very uh, self explanatory and uh, in many cases, applications consist of many different process names, processes. And what you really know, want to know is what is the resource, or the, the performance impact of the application as a whole. So UberAgent automatically um, um, groups processes into applications. There's no configuration necessary for that. And then it shows you the uh, performance metrics per application in a way that humans understand much easier. So for example, here you see uh, Windows Internet Explorer uh, instead of iExplorer.exe or Firefox or Adobe Reader or things like that. Now since UberAgent obviously uh, knows about applications and it also knows about users, it can f figure out pretty easily which uh, applications are used by which uh, users and how much, by how many different users and also by on how many different machines. In, uh, there seems to be a little problem with my data generator with the data simulation I'm running here in the background. But um, yeah, the basic principle is here. Um, these are the top 10 used applications. You can see over time how much in this case, uh, oh my, again my favorite, <laughs> Internet Explorer is being used. If you switch to larger uh, time span, you can see that, for example, some ap applications might be used uh, at, the top of, at, the, uh, at the start of the month others at the end of the month or the quarter or whatever. And um, you can also see that, for example, this uh, Google Chrome I'm highlighting here is being, being run by 10 different users and there are two different versions used. I can drill down and I, that would give, also give me which version, versions specifically are being used. And this is not data that shows you what is being installed or sitting on your machines. Instead, it gives you information what users are actually executing. Um, it, that may not be so important on terminal servers where you, where you know what is installed but you still don't know what users are actually using. But especially on desktop PCs, where users f uh, tend to be cr pretty creative in getting their own stuff on the machine, this shows you what is, being, what is there, what is being used and run. So uh, if, user, if you want your users, for example, to use IE, and they don't want that, but they, use, they find ways to use Chrome instead, this would be a good way of seeing that. Now, uh, what else do I have? Um, yeah, um, one thing uh, that is really important for terminal service is uh, the logon duration, but the equivalent for PCs is the boot duration. If you have a fair PC, if it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's a fat client or laptop or whatever, you want it to be up and ready really, really quickly. And um, it's, it's yeah, so boot duration is for user experience on a PC what the login duration is on a terminal server. And uh, typically you don't, uh, there's n no uh, easy way to find out what happens during the machine boot phase. 
let alone how long that takes and things like that. What, um, what uh, consultants or admins uh, are typically doing when someone really, really, really important complains then a big manager high up in the uh, sky somewhere. Then, um, then you might go to that guy's machine and use XPerf to analyze the boot. XPerf is, of course, a very good tool, and it gives you lots of uh, crazy stuff to, to think about. Uh, but it's a one-time uh, thing. You can go to one PC, you run it, and it gives you information about this specific boot. Um, Uber Agent collects. Uh, information about each single boot in, uh, on all the monitored endpoints, and that is without putting uh, additional load on these systems during boot, by the way. We, of course, we don't want to slow down the boot by, uh, by collecting tons of data. We instead use data that Windows collects anyway, but, it's, but hides really, really well in some uh, dark corner of the operating system, of your hard drive. <laughs> yeah. Now, what UberAgent collects is, of course, the uh, total boot duration. These are, again, the values up there are, again, averages over all machines. And um, down here we have um, the values for uh, each specific uh, boot. So it gives you the, the duration of the total boot, and then it um, um, breaks down that total time into various phases. and um, I have to admit that um, the, since we rely on data that Windows collects, we, we can't influence the way that happens. And sometimes Windows collects more data, and sometimes it collects less data. So just being honest with you, the data we always have is the data from the Windows starting to boot until uh, the login screen is being shown. This is the phase that is called main path here. This is, by the way, Microsoft terminology. Um, and that main path phase that can then be, uh, also be broken down into various sub-phases, like initializ initialization of various um, subsystems, auto-check, the hard disk is being checked every time you boot up, but typically when there's no problem, that's going really quickly, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, various services, of course, are starting up. That is typically, typically one of the longer phases. Um, and this all together gives you, um, um, the, all that combined is the computer startup. Now, let me show you something pretty cool. When I drill down and click on one of these um, entries, I can see information about what happened during that boot. And uh, this blue, yellow kind of uh, graph, it, it shows you which process um, created what kind of disk I.O. during the boot process. And um, if you have a slow boot, you very, it is very likely that uh, your disk I.O. is too high. And you can do two things, either buy SSDs, which is, of course, a very good idea in any case, or you can try to reduce the number of disk I.O.s. And in order to do that, you need to find out which process generates which kind of I.O. And uh, normally, as I mentioned before, it is pretty difficult to analyze that kind of stuff. Um, uh, but Uber Agent gives you the information more or less for free. And it even breaks it down into reads and writes. This is a pretty common myth, I guess, that during the system boot, you only, only uh, reads are generated. Uh, reads, uh, um, of course, the majority of uh, disk I.O. is read, but there's a substantial, uh, substantial amount of writes, too, in this uh, graph uh, that, uh, that is the yellow uh, amount. Okay, let me just, just check time. Okay, we get just two, just a few minutes. One thing I haven't talked about yet anywhere before is a it's a very new feature. It is not not uh, not completely ready yet, but I'd like to show it to you anyway. Um, when you find out uh, when you want to know uh, what the user experience is, for example, when uh, with redirected folders. Happy, a favorite topic of all of you, I know. Um, then it's really important, the, the, the important thing is how fast does the file server answer the, any, uh, any communication, any access? And uh, in other words, what is the latency to, in this case, to the file server? Or any other backend system. If you have a, an application 
um, relying on a database in the back end, a back end. Then typically, if the database is slow, the application is slow. And you want to know about that. If the, you know, on the other hand, if the application is, is slow, it might be the local machine or it might be the database. And you want to know about that. So what you really want to know is what is the latency to various services in the network. And that is, um, that is what, uh, the new thing I, uh, I've added to a region just recently. As I said, it's not finished yet. Uh, specifically, there's no name resolution yet. So right now it just shows you IP addresses. But uh, you can see here um, that, for example, we communicated a lot with this machine uh, uh, there with the IP address .8.5, uh, port 445, which is Windows networking, SMB in other words. We also communi communicate a lot with something on the port, the same machine, port 8089, that is Splunk. Um, in the table below, you can see uh, how many um, packets, how many, yeah, yeah, more or less packets was sent and received. What, is, what the average send or receive rate is in kilobytes per second, uh, and you can see that that is what I was mentioning: the average latency of that communication. This is pretty cool stuff. I think it's um, at we we'll try to make it a little bit shinier, for example, when adding DNS name resolution, this will be a lot easier to interpret. But um, yeah, that should be fun stuff to work with. OK, um, one thing I didn't, didn't even mention um, to finalize my presentation and my demo, uh, I, I said, the, the, I did tell you there is a uh, free version of Splunk that gives you 500 megabytes of data to play around with. There is also a free consultant license of Uber Agent. So uh, if you want to use Uber Agent to collect data from a uh, customer's environment, for example, you're working in on a project and you want, you want to find out what's actually happening there. What are their servers doing? What are their desktops doing? Whatever. You can request a license. It's free. They are, uh, each um, consultant license is uh, limited to two months, but you can get multiple ones if you want to. So we, we're not really strict in, uh, about that. And yeah, that makes it pretty easy for you. it makes it a lot easier for you to work uh, uh, to, yeah to work to do your work and our hope is of course that you show some of these dashboards to your customers and your customers uh, that your customers are really really impressed and want to buy the product the next day so with that uh, thank you very much and have a great day mm -hmm.